welcome to lecture two. This lecture will be about a recap from probability theory and statistics. The lecture is divided into three parts. The first part being about some basic concepts from probability theory, conditional probability being the second part, and finally we will discuss random variables, discrete ones and conditional ones. So starting by the goals of today, today we will discuss the intuition for probability theory and also set theory, the foundation language of probability. The language of set theory is crucial to understand probability problems. It allows us to define and manipulate set of things, to perform operations on sets, to define relationships among sets, and it is also possible to use Viam diagrams to visualize the relationships among sets. So the agenda for today includes a motivation for probability theory, set theory, an introduction to Venn diagram, and finally some operations on sets. So before we go on to talk about uh, probabilities, it's important to motivate you to why we need probability in the first place. And probability is no more than a mathematical framework to deal with uncertainty, to deal with random phenomena. But what do we mean when we say that something is random? One way to think about randomness is that it's a form of expressing something that we don't know, something that is uncertain and that it will happen in the future. So imagine flipping a coin. It's a random event, right? But what if you actually knew all the information, such as the force in which you flip the coin, the orientation by which you flip the coin, the surface smoothness of the table in which the coin hits, and all of those physical variables, what if you knew everything about uh, the experiment? Would it, still be able, would it still be considered a random event? No, because you would definitely know if, it would, if the coin would come up heads or tails. In that situation, the event would be deterministic with a probability of 100%, and you would not need to employ probabilities altogether. But in the absence of, of, of all information about the phenomenon, you cannot predict the outcome of the coin flip. So when we say that something is random, we are basically saying that our knowledge about the phenomenon is limited. So we can't be certain what will happen. For that reason, we use probabilities. And we can say something like the probability of coming up heads is 50% or 0.5. What does that mean? There are two possible interpretations for the term probability. The first one being perhaps the most common is relative frequency. It states that as the number of coin flips increases the proportion of time by which we would see heads, it would be half of the time. The other interpretation has to do with the degree of belief uh, in the outcome, in a certain outcome um, that we are studying. For instance, consider the probability that it will rain today. I may have a degree of belief uh, being 0.2, Another person may have another degree of belief being 0.3 according to our experience with the weather and our knowledge of how things such as the humidity or the clouds in the sky affect uh, the chance of raining. Sometimes these two interpretations of probability coincide, such as when we are talking about the weather, I may base my own personal uh, belief of if it's going to happen or not on my experience and also on the past uh, knowledge of what has happened in terms of frequency of rain. So now that I have provided you with an intuition for probability and randomness, let's talk about the theory of sets. The theory of sets is the language of probability and it's very important to understand the mathematical foundation for probability. A set is a collection of some items, and probability is defined and calculated for sets, always for sets. And in a set it doesn't matter how the elements are ordered, 
but the elements that are within the, the collection. We typically define a set in mathematics using curly brackets. So we can define the set A being clubs and diamonds, for instance. We can use the following terminology to say that the diamond belongs to A and we can use this terminology to say that hearts does not belong to A. We often work with sets of numbers and in those cases we there is an alternative way to define the set. We can state the property satisfied by the elements in the set. So we can say something like this, A is all X such that X satisfies a given property. So let's see some examples. We have the set of all integer numbers between minus 2 and 10, exclusive. We have the set of all square natural numbers. We could also have the set of rational numbers. An interval of real numbers are also, is also a set. And finally, the set of complex numbers can also be considered a set uh, interesting to study. So let's understand how sets interrelate with each other. The first notion is the notion of subset. A is considered a subset of B if all the elements in A are, con are included in B. The natural numbers are a subset of integer numbers, for example. Simply put, two sets are equal if they have exact, the exact same elements. In set theory, we have the concept of the null set or the empty set that has no elements at all. And importantly, the null set is always contained in any set that you can possibly imagine, that you can possibly define. We also have the concept of universal set, which is the set that consists of all the elements that you possibly could consider in the context that you are studying. Every set A in the context that you are studying is a subset of the universal set. Examples of universal sets are the following. For the roll of the dice, you have the set that has the, all the dice faces, such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. For the toss of a coin once, you have the set with two elements being heads and tails, because those are the only two outcomes that can uh, appear. In set theory, we make use of a very useful instrument, of a very useful tool, which is the Venn diagram. The Venn diagram is very important to visualize the relationship or the absence of a relationship between two sets. So here you see a set B that is a subset of set A it's enclosed within set A. In set theory, we can perform operations on sets and we can visualize the outcome of the operations using Venn diagrams. So for instance, consider union, the union of sets. The union of two sets is the set that has all the elements that are either in A or in B. Importantly, we can say that the outcome uh, of the union of A with B is the same outcome of the union of B with A. In the Venn diagram, when two sets intersect, we depict the union of them as shown. In a more complex example, we can consider the union of several uh, sets, and the idea is basically the same. The union of three or more sets is the set, the resulting set, that consists of all the elements that are present in at least one of the sets considered. But we can also perform the intersection of two sets. The intersection of two sets is the set that contains all elements that are both in set A and in set B. Importantly, A intersected with B is equal to B intersected with A. The resulting set is the same. So imagine that you had a set with the elements 1 and 2 and another set with the elements 2 and 3. The only common elements would be 2, so the intersection set would, be, would contain only the element 2. You can also generalize the intersection of sets for more than two sets and the idea is pretty much the same. The intersection sets are all the elements that are in all sets. The complement set is the set that consists of all the elements that are not uh, in 
in the set of interests. So all elements that are in the universal set but are not uh, in set A. Sometimes there are cases in which there is no possible intersection between the sets. In, the, in those cases we say that the sets are the joint. The intersection between the sets is the null set or the empty set. There are no shared elements between the two sets. And again, you can generalize this notion to more than two sets. And you have here a simple exercise to practice your skills. So finally, to finalize, let's talk about the learning objectives for today. With this lesson, the student should be able to understand why we need probability theory in the first place. We have also reviewed set theory. And even though we did some simple exercises, it's important for the student to do some exercises on his own. So I wish you a good study and thank you for your attention and see you next lesson.